How's everybody tonight? Blessed, highly flavored. Amen. Anointed and appointed. Ready to kick butt on the enemy. Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a a choice. Everyone tell your neighbor, you have the power to choose. Choose right. (laughs) Not left. (laughs) <laughs> glory grab your swords turn to second corinthians chapter five training for reigning first you got to be willing to be trained amen these are your manuals eternal manuals Everyone say, I'm not religious. religious. Jesus came to bring a kingdom, kingdom. not religion. religion. Glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Is everybody there? You know, we had talked about... (laughs) um, Maintaining your spirit, spiritual maintenance, amen, so that there can be a kingdom mindset. And one of the things that the Spirit brought to me today was to bring a deeper understanding of a kingdom mindset. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let's speak it from the beginning. It says, for we know that if our what? Earthly house, this tent is destroyed We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the the heavens. In other words, what he's explaining, because a kingdom mindset is the arena where he's explaining that we are in this temporary body, but we groan to go home for a more eternal body. Is everybody with me? For in this we what? Verse 2. We groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from where heaven Heaven. listen one of the things that's happened is when we become when we're in christ and we'll talk more about that we have entered a whole nother world we've entered a whole nother realm and so by entering this whole nother world and whole nother realm we knew need to learn how to not only live in it but operate in it Amen. amen All right, let's go a little further. Verse 3. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found what? Naked. For if, for we who are what? In this tent, this body, amen, grown being what? Burden, not because we want to be unclothed, but because we want to be what? Further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. There are times you don't even realize that you're going through stuff. And you're groaning. And you don't even know why you're groaning. You don't know why. It's like, man, what's the problem? You know what? You're groaning because you want to be more clothed from home. You got to remember, one of the things that God is trying to do is restore us from our original state of being. Because we were with him before we came here. Amen? It says we are in him and with him. And then we were sent from his presence into this world. And so we groan, we desire to go home or to be clothed from home. In verse 5, it says, Now he who is what? Prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the what? Spirit. Spirit of what? Guarantee. So we understand here, look it. By maintaining the connection by the Spirit of God with the Father, we can walk in spiritual sight with spiritual eyes. So in other words, the connection that is made is through the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, there is no connection. That's what separates religion from relationship. Amen? Because religion lives out of the head, out of knowledge. Has everybody got it? They live out of the head. But those who are in the Spirit live out of the Spirit. 
And this is where you're able to interpret what God says when he talks about the mind, because many times the mind is interpreted as spirit or soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by what? Right. Sight. Again, by maintaining the connection by the Spirit of God with the Father, we can walk not only in spiritual sight, but with spiritual eyes. We see things that we never used to see before. And seeing is also a word called understanding. Because when you're seeing things, you're able to understand, able to discern. You see things. One of the things the enemy wants to do is blind you. Why? Because he fears you when you have a kingdom mindset. Does everybody understand that? All right, let's go a little further. Verse 8, read it with me. Because we're sowing. Why? Because when you speak light, you eat light, and you change. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our what? Aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well pleasing. In other words, in this we have a desire to please the Godhead and the eternal order of glory. So I just talked about three things. We're going to talk about seven of them. The first one, it explains that we are in this temporary body, but grown to go home. Amen? The second one is, by maintaining connection by the Spirit of God with the Father, we can walk in spiritual sight with spiritual eyes. By maintaining connection, amen, by the Spirit of God, With the Father, we can walk in spiritual sight with spiritual eyes. Write it. Why? Because you're supposed to teach it. Amen? If you're not here to teach, then what are you doing here? Hello? The third thing is this. Why? Because this is a kingdom mindset. Does everybody understand this? Why? You're able, when you write this down, you're able to check yourself and see if you're about the kingdom mindset. If you're about the Father's business or not. Or if you're full of religion. Amen? Amen. Verse, uh, verse. The third one is desire to what? Please the Godhead and eternal order of what? Glory. Why? This is how you check yourself. Is everybody Okay. A desire to please the Godhead in the eternal order of glory. There's a desire in you. Amen? If that desire isn't in you, there's something wrong. If there's not a desire to please God, there's something wrong. It says, that's why we, therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to God. In verse 10, for we must what? All appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the what? In the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Hmm. So that is an understanding. That, 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 here's the fourth thing. There is an understanding that no one escapes the judgment seat of Christ. All men need to know this fact. Nobody escapes. All men need to know this fact. Amen? Amen? In verse 11, knowing therefore the terror, is everybody there? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of the sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ, what? Compels us because we, what? Judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for who? Themselves. But for him who died 
for them and rose again. Here's a powerful thing. There is an understanding now that this, there is an open dimensional realm. There's an open dimensional port. In other words, this open dimensional port was created by Christ Jesus' blood that was shed. He opened a dimensional port for me and you to step into. It is a whole nother world, a whole nother realm. That's why when you first come to Christ, you don't get it all, do you? No. That's why you got to be trained up. It'd be nice if we all got it all, all instantly. Amen. But he doesn't work that way. <laughs> but one of the things you do is you, get, you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Then you begin to learn how to get baptized. You, you, you seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's going to guide you to all truth. He's going to open your eyes. All things are going to begin to change. You're going to have fellowship with the Father through the Spirit, not through knowledge. Is everybody okay? Glory. So this, th th this is an open dimensional port was created by Christ Jesus through the shed blood when he died and he rose again. That is the fifth thing. Why? This is an understanding of the kingdom mindset. We're not living according to the physical anymore. We understand these things. We know that there is a dimensional port open to us, ready to take us home at any time if we're in right standing with him. It's before us always. Amen? Amen. Ooh. Is everybody okay? Yeah. <clears throat> in verse uh, 16, Therefore, from now on, we what? We regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Are you ready for this? Look at the verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, those in Christ <laughs> have, uh, they've got an understanding. They've entered another realm of life because the eternal realm of Christ came into the temporary realm. Remember, Jesus the Christ was the eternal realm. Amen? That's why he's called the Christ. Eternity was placed in a body who stepped into this realm. That's why he said, no man can come to the Father except for through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. When he shed the blood, because bloodshed opens ports, that's why the demonic realm loves to kill humans and clusters because they can open dimensional demonic realms to access. But Jesus, in other words, no one can come through the eternal port of Christ Jesus unless he is the DNA of Christ Jesus by the seal of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Christ. No one can enter. Only those who are clean, pure heart, clean hands. Amen? Washed by the blood of Christ. So again, this dimensional, the fifth one we were talking about um, is the dimensional port was created by Christ Jesus when he shed the blood. The sixth thing is those in Christ have entered another realm of life because the eternal realm of Christ came into the temporary realm, leaving his followers. Now, what has he left his followers? His spirit and weapons of warfare. Glorious. So he left me and you, his spirit and weapons of warfare. So that means you got to learn the weapons, don't you? you got to learn how to walk with the Spirit, don't you? That's why it's training for reigning. Is everybody okay? Glory. So if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in the kingdom, amen, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. <laughs> wow. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be what? Reconciled to God. For he made him 
who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, again, so the seventh completion of this arena is a kingdom mindset is we recognize ourselves not only as soldiers but as ambassadors of the eternal order of Christ. Amen? We express the need of reconciliation by reconnecting with the eternal home. And how do we do that? We introduce people to Christ. Amen? The, and, of course, reconciling them and reconnecting them to the eternal home and the eternal creator. And what begins to happen is then there's fruits of righteousness manifesting. It's no longer good and evil. It's righteousness. Amen? Fruits of what? Righteousness, which pleases God. Is everybody okay? Romans 14. In verse 16. Romans 14, 16. Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken as evil. For the what? The kingdom of God. Everyone say kingdom of God. Yeah. Is not what? Eating and drinking. But what? Righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the what? In the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's the connector, isn't he? He's the connector. He is the mentor. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, the Godhead of the eternal order. Glory. 1 Corinthians 6. So there's an area where the kingdom mindset understands these things. First Corinthians six. Is everybody there in verse nine? Six nine. Let's speak it together, please. Do you, not, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? So only righteousness does. Amen? Do not be what? Deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of us. Amen? But you were washed, but you were what? Sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the what? Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Again, here he calls, he connects us again. Unrighteousness is not a part of the eternal realm or the eternal order of Christ. It's or the kingdom of God. Amen. That kingdom mindset avoids these things. Avoids association with these and avoids approval of them. If there is a kingdom mindset. I'm going to say that again. What are we avoiding? Well, it says that you cannot, anything that's unrighteousness, any practice of unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived, right? Fornicators, idolaters, homosexuals, sodomites, whatever, thieves, liars, drunkards, all of these things that practice wickedness. Amen? There, must, there is a mindset of understanding that we avoid these things because we have the kingdom mindset. And we do not approve of those things because that's kingdom mindset. If that's not there, then the kingdom mindset has not been matured yet. Is everybody okay? Now, again, then he talks about the connection, amen, through the what? 
It says, and such were some of us, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the what? Spirit of our God. Again, he shows us the connection. So these things, the Holy Spirit is the mentor. Everyone say the mentor of the eternal order and the connector. Not only that, he's the convictor. <laughs> he convicts us, doesn't he? Amen. He chastens us. Why? When we fall out of divine order. He's there to put us back in order. Why? Because he knows if we're out of order, the kingdom mindset is out of order also. Doesn't the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy? Listen. Grab hold of this. For we were once children of transgression. Amen? We were children of transgression. And we were offsprings of deceit. With what? Selfish, a selfish, evil nature. That's why it's required that we are born again. We lived for ourselves. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, and every other thing out there, man. Anything to fulfill the flesh. Doing my will, our will, not his. That's not the mindset of the kingdom. That's the mindset of carnality. That is the mindset of evil, which our old man was. Amen. Colossians 3. Kingdom mindset. Colossians 3 and verse 1. Can we speak this together, please? Is everybody there? If then we were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your what? Your mind or your what? Thoughts. Everyone say thoughts. thoughts. On things above, not on things of the earth. It doesn't mean that while you're driving, hello, you can run red, run red lights and stop signs. You, the officer is still going <clears> to <throat> give you a ticket even though you said you, you've been thinking above. He may lock you up, but, you know. <laughs> Again, there is wisdom involved, amen? You can be still in the spirit and operate in this realm. In fact, you should be. Set your minds on the thing above and not on the things of the earth. In other words, that's also not only your thoughts, but desires. For you what? You what? Died. You what? Died. You died. <laughs> Everyone say, I died. I died. In, Christ. in Christ. See, you can't live in Christ. You have to die in Christ. Why? Because if you die in Christ, then he lives. Amen. See, many people try to live in Christ, and he ain't there. That's religion. That's why the word says the seed must first what? Die. Oh, glory. For you died and your life is where? Hidden in Christ, with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, wait a minute, you see that? Christ, who is our what? Our life. When he appears, hmm, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your what? Members which are on the earth. Again, he tells us again. Fornication, uncleanness, passion evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the what? Wrath of God is coming upon the sons of what? Disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you, are, you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, and do not lie to yourself or another or one another, since you have put off the old man with its deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Now, here's something very important because so many, look at, so many people put on the old man by agreeing with the voice of the stranger. One of the things is the Lord should be our source, not our resource. And many people have it in the opposite direction. They use God as a resource and everything as their source. 
That means their sources are coming first. So they're relying on the things of the world first to maintain them instead of him maintaining them. And you know what that brings? Confusion, frustration, and oppression. I'm going to say that again. It brings confusion, frustration, and oppression. Why? Because it opens the door to the enemy because it is pride. And pride is rebellion towards God. It's rebellion towards authority and his authority. Pride is a killer. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. So we're to set our minds on kingdom things, aren't we? Amen? All right. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 12. Uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, verse 10, I'm sorry. And they have put, off, put on the what? New man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, <clears throat> uh, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all things, put on what? Love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you what? Richly with what? All wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. See, many individuals, when the enemy comes, that, that kingdom mindset has been exchanged for a carnal mindset or religious mindset. And the joy of the Lord is no longer there. Because a person agrees and they don't fight. They just let the enemy and woe is me. Oh, I don't know. Let me tell you if you have to stay busy to maintain peace, that's out of order. Something's wrong. Amen? That's the same thing. That's called demon management. And it's a false peace, anyways. The enemy's just trying to get a person to bam, slam. Take them right out again. That person is one step away from falling and being taken out. In fact, the hook is already in the jaw. It's just a matter of time when it pulls. Because the kingdom mindset has been exchanged for the selfish mindset, the carnal mindset. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. See, the enemy knows how to play with people. And this is where a kingdom mindset understands these things. <laughs> Does everybody got it? Listen. The word says that he's setting a trap for us every single day. It says that he shoots arrows at us every day. He's trying to set me and you up every single day. Wherever we go and whatever we're doing. He's trying to set us a trap. He's trying to fall, cause us to fall into lust. He's trying to cause us to fall into selfishness. He's trying to cause us to fall into oppression. He's trying to cause us to do whatever it takes to open a door to him because he's always knocking. He's trying to get you to shoot off at the mouth, become angry, frustrated, resentful, offended. That's his job. And he knows how to do it. He's very, very good at it. He'll outwit us in a second. But if, you get, if you're in the spirit, there's no way. No way. Why? Because he's going to tell you things to come. But the problem is... is he gets people out of the spirit. So many people are so easily, a little knock. Oh, huh. They're more excited about going to work and making money. They're more excited about building their own things instead of building the kingdom. 
They spend more time on themselves than they do on him. That's not kingdom mindset. That's selfish mindset. Everything should be about him, not us. Amen? That's why he says, and whatever you do, labor unto the Lord. And uh, Isaiah 26, verse 1, would you read it with me? And that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for the walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, which keeps the truth, may enter. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose what? Mine is stayed on you. Oh, powerful. That's true peace, isn't it? But again, there is a false peace. How many know that the devil can remove his demons from you? He can remove the demonic influence from you to convince you sometimes that you're doing the thing of God when it's really not of God. But only the Holy Spirit will expose that. But if you're truly in the Spirit, that's why when we're out using and doing whatever, what do we do? We stay busy to what? Not use. I got to stay busy. I am only get peace when I'm busy. Well, that's demon management. That means that the devil steps off of you to keep you busy. Go ahead. Well, man, I get oppressed when, I don't, when I'm not busy. Listen, if you're getting in God's presence and getting oppressed, you got trouble. <laughs> you ain't pressing through. They're pressing on you. Hallelujah. Verse 3, read it with me. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he what? He trusts you. Listen, people don't trust God in everything. They only trust him in a couple things. They don't trust him in their, their finances. They don't trust him in their health. They only trust him in eternal life, some of them. But they don't trust him in anything else. So they fight and they do and they stay busy because the kingdom mindset isn't there. The kingdom mindset says, I trust you in everything. I would rather die than go back. Does everybody get that? Verse 4, what does he say? Trust in the Lord what? Forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. For he brings down those who dwell on high. The lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread on it down. The feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is what? Upright. Oh, most upright. You weigh the path of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O oh Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. With, with my soul, I have what? Desired. Desired you in the night. Yes, my spirit within me. I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will what? Learn righteousness. Let grace be shown to the wicked. Yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of the upright, he will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Lord, when your hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they will see and be ashamed for their envy of people. Yes, the fire of your enemies shall what? Devour them. How powerful. Perfect peace to those whose mind is set on him. So everybody got it. Perfect peace, true peace, not false peace. Hebrews 10. <clears throat> Hebrew kingdom mindset that one of the most important things about a kingdom mindset realize is that all influence is from the unseen realm whether using people or technology does everybody get it if it promotes rebellion Amen? If it promotes lust, 
If it promotes flesh and pride, the kingdom mindset knows these things that all influence is first generated from the unseen realm. And if that mindset is not there, that person does not have a kingdom mindset. Again, God is trying to mature the kingdom mindset. Does everybody understand her? That's why he called many of them immature. He said, you still need milk. By now, you should have been a teacher. Why? He said, because you've not learned Christ. Hello? Again, those who are in Christ are in the kingdom by the spirit of connection. That's why it's important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can play all you want. You can play religion all you want, but God knows. He knows what's going on. He knows the intent. And see, a, the kingdom mindset knows that God knows your intentions. He knows your motives. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're telling the truth or lying. A kingdom mindset knows it all. But the carnal mindset justifies, reasons, makes excuses. That's not the kingdom mindset. A kingdom mindset will always have victory. Say it with me. A kingdom mindset, kingdom mindset. always has victory. Because he sees it all. He knows it all. Glory. <laughs> Hebrews 10. Is everybody there? Good. Verse 15. <laughs> you know, the Colonel Mount says, nobody can see. Nobody knows. No connection with the Lord. None. No connection. Disconnect. Does not compute. Hebrews 10 verse 15. Let's speak it. Are you ready? But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws, or which are known as his commands, his desires, his will. In our what? In our hearts, which is associated with your spirit. And in their minds, which is associated with your soul. And I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. <laughs> now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having the boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest forever, the house of God, let us draw near with a what? True heart, honest in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with what? Pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is what? Faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not what? Forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, a kingdom mindset desires to assemble. Amen. Amen. Desires to assemble. But he know, there's an understanding that the enemy is going to come at us to prevent us from assembling. Amen? That's a kingdom mindset understanding. Why? Because they realize that the influence is unseen, always pressing us. And you know what one of the things we ask us? Who told me that? Oh, I don't have that one on tonight. But I'll be Bach. He'll be Bach for me and you. Amen? These are in us. His laws, his wills, his desire, they're in us by the Holy Spirit. But see, so many times people don't allow the Holy Spirit 
to have dominion. Let me share something with you. He, he, he always makes, uh, he, you can sense, you can not, he kind of announces himself when he comes. Amen? Amen. Kind of, you know he's there, yeah, but you never know when he's gone. He doesn't tell you I'm leaving. <laughs> and so many people just can to go. Everything's cool, nothing wrong. And the Holy Spirit ain't even there. Not even with them anymore. And they try to do it in their own strength. And you know what happens when you do it in your own strength? Oppression. Drainage. Easily offended. Justification. Blaming everyone else for how you feel. Hello? That's a carnal mindset. It's not a kingdom mindset, is it? But see, we've got to begin to recognize things. Because it's essential. Because what's getting ready to come soon, if you're not kingdom mindset, you'll be taken out. Romans 8. How many times is God warning us? You know, we don't have any excuse here. God warns us all the time in every, every training session. Talks about accursed items. Talks about all of these things. We got no excuse. We just refuse to yield. Amen? <clears throat> Romans 8, 12, please. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. Hello? That is not kingdom mindset, is it? That's a selfish, carnal mindset. I don't want to go any further than that. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will what? So you have the power to choose, right? For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die. But if by the Spirit you put the deeds of the death, you'll live. For as many as are what? Led by the what? The Spirit who is the what? The mentor, the connector, the convictor, the spanker. Amen? The teacher, the comforter, he's the one that connects us to the Father. See, so many people have a relationship in the mind, imagination, and not in the spirit. It's different because when it's in the spirit, it's heart change. There is a desire. There is a love affair. Amen? Now, in the beginning, there are things that we know we got to do because we got to do it. I knew I had to do something with this life that was messed up, OD'd enough times. You know, there was some, I, mean, I, I didn't know when the last one was going to be. I'd cried out to God every time. I knew I had to do something. Checked into rehab. I didn't want to be there. Amen course when all the instructors were a bunch of huffers I got out of there trying to tell me how to get free when they're bound smoking chain smoking what the heck is this it wasn't until I found Christ and you know what once I found Christ I knew that that was my only way out and you know what I did I had to get disciplined I had to make myself go to prayer. Get in there, boy. Uh, get in there. Get, get, get in prayer. Go pray. Go speak that word. Go. I don't feel like it. Go. And the devil will tell me, God don't speak to you. God don't do this. God don't. Oh, really? You, you go in there enough times, God's waiting for you. But see, the enemy knows how to play with the mind. That's why we have to have the kingdom mindset that God is always speaking to us in some form. It doesn't always be verbally. There's a knowing. 
See, but when you learn how to walk in the Spirit, you don't have to hear His voice. You know His voice. You're not looking for His voice. It's there all the time. There was an impression. It's expressed all the time. Things happen. You know it's dad. That's my dad. That's my dad. I'm his kid. Spoiled too. I love it. Verse 14. For as many who are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. Oh man, that puts you in a whole other arena. It's called eternal. Kingdom mindset. Knowing that all influence is from the unseen. And your responsibility is to unzip it and expose it. But if you're not willing to, you're going to easily be taken. Amen? You'll be easily deceived. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of what? Bondage. Again, to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God and of children, then what? Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified with him. Now you're ready for this? For I considering that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be paired with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. Ooh. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Even creation is waiting for me and you. Amen? For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who was subjected in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Why? Because everything in this world is ruled by deception in Satan's kingdom. Everything. So listen, if everything is ruled by deception and fear of Satan's kingdom, what do you think is coming at you every day? What thing, who's, who do you think is trying to promote you? Me, myself, and I. That's where pride comes in. Pride rejects authority. Pride does not believe. Pride says, I know it. Oh, I don't need to do that. Oh, I don't need the word says, submit to God, then you can resist the devil. You can't submit to God? Then you can't put on the mind of Christ and be kingdom-minded? You will not resist the devil. He will deceive you and trick you all the time. And he doesn't do it instantly. And believe me, he doesn't come to you that day and say, Hi, I'm Lucifer's brother-in-law. And I'm going to trick you today. Lucifer doesn't have a brother-in-law, but he'll lie to you that way. Does everybody get it? Or I'm, I'm Uncle Henry, and this is Aunt Mary. You remember us? That's not them. People are still speaking to the dead, and they wonder why they go through troubles. They're dead. They don't hear you. Amen? They're gone. Hallelujah. Sons of God, led by the Spirit, eternal order of the Godhead, keeping us in the kingdom of justice and righteousness by the power of Christ. And what does he do? He leads us. Are you ready for this? What does the Holy Spirit do then? He first leads us to the king. He first leads us to the what? He leads us to the king, Jesus. The second thing he does is he puts you in a place to pursue after your enemies. Amen? He puts you in a pursuit over your enemies. Why? By executing spiritual warfare. See, if these things are not happening with you, there's not a kingdom mindset. If you're not going after the king first in the morning, amen, and then executing warfare, then that's not kingdom mindset. That's carnal. Is everybody Okay. What does he do? He leads us first into the King Jesus, and then he calls us into, puts us in a position of pursuit over our enemies by executing spiritual warfare. For what? To release souls that have been taken captive. It starts off in the spirit first, not in the physical. If you try to do something first physical before spirit, you lose. 
Nothing happens first physically for, with victory. It must be first done in the spirit. That's why you're to pray first. Amen? You're to warfare first. That's why the word says, bind the strong man before you enter. And if you're not doing it, then it's not kingdom mindset. And the devil's just, let, let me tell you, that's all he does is back off on you. He pulls back the demons. He pulls back all that stuff. And you think everything's cool because ain't nothing happening. Man, you're just going to work. Things are there, man. You're doing this. You're doing that. But you are no danger to his kingdom. None. He'll just back it off. He'll even remove sickness from you because that's nothing but a spirit most of the time. He'll remove that from you, thinking you're okay. Is everybody okay? Okay, so he first leads you to King Jesus, then he puts you on a pursuit to overcome your enemies by executing spiritual warfare, and that purpose is to release souls that are been taken captive. What's he going to release them to? Into his kingdom. Amen? So the Lord's going to use you by warfare to release souls that have been taken captive so that they are released from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And then what does he do? And then he trains them as soldiers of the eternal order. Why? So that they get a kingdom mindset and repeat the same thing. Is everybody okay? And that's how the kingdom expands. Glorious. Second Peter one. Oh yes. Second Peter chapter one. In verse two. Are you ready? Grace and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of, our, of Jesus our Lord and his what? Divine, divine power. power. Everybody say divine power. Uh, has given to us all things that what? Pertain. Pertain to life. So without divine power, hello? Then it's carnal power. People call it soul power. I got soul power. Man, you sold out. No, you ain't sold out. You out. And his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us what? Exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be what? Partakers of the what? Divine nature. Wow. Having what? Escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Why? Because you can't. Escape the corruption in the world through loss without the divine nature. That's kingdom mindset. That is the divine nature. Amen? But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control to self-control, perseverance to perseverance, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours, amen? And abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more what? Diligent, which means what? Consistent. To make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? You will never stumble. And then what? For so will what? Entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the eternal, everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, our, our Savior. Now, what is that entrance? That's called the eternal port. Has everybody got it? That's the eternal port. So this divine nature is a kingdom mindset. It is of honor, respect, and reverence to the divine order. One of the things that the Lord does is he sets a divine order of boundaries. They are preset for training. They're preset for training. And if you are sensitive and in the spirit, you won't go over these boundaries. And when you do, he can't trust you. He waits for you to come back into them. These boundaries are established by discipline. What is discipline? It's obedience and submission, isn't it? 
Why? Because his desire, he sets these boundaries to what? Keep us sanctified. Set apart. See, so many people just run wherever they want to run. They do whatever they want to do. People are going to churches God's never even sent them to. Of course, they have their own intentions while they're going. Amen? And this sanctification is for purity. And then he sets us up in the area where we are accountable because accountability brings an integrity. Does everybody understand it? Do I need to repeat all this? Don't ask me to do that. <laughs> okay. The divine nature is, of course, a kingdom mindset. It's associated with honor, respect, and reverence. And what is it to reverence to the divine order of boundaries God sets? They're preset for what? Training. Everyone say boundaries are preset, boundaries are preset. For, training. for training so that you and I become disciplined. Amen? And, of course, discipline is obedience and submission. And these boundaries are set for me and you to maintain this sanctification. The enemy can't touch you in these boundaries. We Listen, they touch you when you step over these boundaries. The sanctification is for purity. What does he want me and you to do? He wants us to learn accountability, which brings integrity. Amen? That's why he sets boundaries. That's why so many people go over the boundaries. They just they don't even they don't even acknowledge the Lord. They just go ahead and do it. No kingdom mindset. Just go ahead. Oh, I just feel like that. I think this, you know. Don't even wait on an answer. Just go ahead and do it. Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness gracious. I got a lot left here. But I think we'll cool it. Is everybody okay? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. We're just going to slam this one. Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, are, is everybody there? Well, therefore, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk. Worthy of the calling which you were called. With all what? Lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering and bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Yes. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is, an abo who is above all and through all and in you all. But each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captive, captiv or captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first, what? Descended in the lower parts of the earth. He who ascended is also the one who ascended. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be what? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for what? The equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for edifying the body of Christ. So is training required? Yeah. See, some people only want a certain amount of training, and then they stop. I'm good. Not kingdom mindset. There should be always a hunger for more. I want more, Lord. Teach me more. Teach me more. I want to know more. If that ain't there, there's something wrong. There's a block. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to what? The unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man. That means he's talking is a perfect man. It's a kingdom mindset. Amen? To the measure of the statue of the fullness of what? Christ. That we should no longer be idiots. I mean, uh, children tossed to and fro and carried away by every wind of doctrine and any impression that we don't even realize an influence of the unseen realm. Or by trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the what? Truth in love 
may what? Grow up, man, in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joint and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes what? Growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, in testifying, O Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their what? Minds. Minds. Why? Because they don't have a kingdom mindset. They got a what? Selfish mindset. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with what? Greediness. What does he say here? But you have not so learned Christ. Remember, this letter is written to the believers, not unbelievers. You've not learned Christ. You've not allowed the Holy Spirit to establish a kingdom mindset. We must yield to him so we allow him to build it. Amen? If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off what? Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your thoughts, your soul, that you put on the what? A new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, put away what? Lying, because that's not kingdom thinking. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are all members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? To the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need, not build your own empire. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? All oh, snap. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. In other words, we're to be seeking unity. We reject pride. It does... <laughs> We do not allow the physical realm to supersede the eternal realm. We are waiting and expecting God to do something. There's not an if. There's a when. Amen? That's a kingdom mindset. Not if. Oh, God, I hope you endure us, man. No. Lord, don't let me miss when you do it because I'm in an expectation circumstance. I'm in that mode because when I pray, I know he hears. And if I know he hears, I know he's going to release it. That's all he's asking me to do is to do something so he can release his promise. Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. We must be willing to be trained and strip off the old man. And put on the new kingdom mindset. Amen? Amen? Oh, I got more, but. My wife is telling me it's enough. <laughs> That's the carnal mindset. <laughs> Come on. This is training for raining. Do you get it? Amen? You got enough information to discern whether you're, hello, whether you are or you're not. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And we ask you to continue to establish the kingdom mindset. Mature us, Lord, quickly before we hurt ourselves. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God. <laughs>